Holy mo- There's a school of like a hundred big GTs here. 200 sharks, and they're all just cruising along. This is chaos! This guy's beached himself. This is absolutely crazy. These sharks are beaching himself. G'day and welcome back to a very special episode. It's a magical time of the year out here. The ocean is preparing to bring new life. So everything underwater seems to be spawning or mating or nesting. They've all got their different ways of going about it, but it's absolutely amazing to watch. So the next few days, we're gonna immerse ourselves out here with a front row seat and watch some of the best nature shows on this planet. For those new to the channel, I'm Strick and this is my best mate, Az. We both post our adventures here. Just a reminder that this channel has two separate series playing at the moment. As is on the new boat for his Blue Highway series, while I'm tied up with some work on the opposite side of the country, so I missed out on that trip, but I'm also doing my best to post weekly videos here as well. To watch any of our series, click on their playlist section and then the episodes will play in order. Now, let's get straight into the action. Oh, this is amazing. There's a line of manta rays right under the boat here. There must be a bit of courtship going on. I'd say this is the big female up the front, and then there's some smaller males in hot pursuit. Oh, I've got to get in there for a closer look. The female will be followed by a train of males trying to impress her. She will flip and spin to see who can keep up. A dance that can last several days and even weeks before she chooses the lucky partner to mate with. An intimate moment that after weeks of foreplay is over in a matter of seconds. The male, now satisfied with his work, glides off into the distant ocean while the mother will begin a pregnancy that lasts for over a year. Now down here lives one of the most territorial fish in the ocean, feared by divers all over the world. But she's got good reason to be territorial at the moment because she's protecting some precious cargo. Let's go check her out. A giant amongst the triggerfish family. This is the Titan triggerfish. She's built herself a nest where she tends to her eggs, blowing water over them to keep them oxygenated. Titan triggerfish have a savage set of teeth and during nesting season have been known to chase and even bite divers. A passing shark causes her to momentarily leave her nest and a smaller, cheekier orange line triggerfish takes his chance to sabotage. The last thing he needs is some new kids on the block that will quickly be bigger and stronger than him. But he'd better keep a good lookout. The mother titan would kill him if she found out. The mother titan triggerfish has taken a very costly break. She returns to the nest where she will tirelessly continue to blow water over the remaining eggs to keep them oxygenated. I guess it just shows that the titan triggerfish have very good reason to be so territorial. All right, I've got the drone up behind these palm trees here. I think this is gonna be a pretty cool shot. We'll get the boat on the, on the plane and do a bit of a drive-by. Gotta watch out for the bombies up ahead. Let's go. This looks sick. There's birds like flying in front of the, the drone. This is magic. Those birds get so close, but they can maneuver so well that they, they always miss the drone. Oh, that's the shot. Man, this place is paradise on earth. There's a huge school of fish back here. I'm gonna need to jump in on that. I'm gonna anchor on a sand patch. There's a massive aggregation. Something's going on there. Looks like a school of big eye trevally and like hundreds of other fish. They could have been parrot fish down a bit deeper. Let's get in there.
This is a school of female parrotfish, all eager and ready to spawn. They're fighting over one singular male. Looks like this bloke's got his work cut out for him. Oh, it's just amazing in there at the moment. The ocean is literally buzzing. There's like an energy about it. All the parrotfish are spawning. The big eye trevally are so wide and the sharks can sense it as well. They are so active. And this is happening the entire section of this reef. Here's your time to shine, oh, show me what you can do. The way my hands feel on your body, they were dancing in the dark. With every move I make, you're falling. Up a bit further, there's humphead Maori wrasse that have aggregated in a big school to spawn as well. I've never seen this many of them all together. It's absolutely amazing. And what they do, they're a hermaphrodite, which means they change sex. The humphead Maori wrasse, they're born as females, but when they get bigger and bigger, a couple of them will turn into the big dominant males and they'll get that big bump on their head. And so there's a couple of males servicing that entire school of, uh, of females. Although having so many girlfriends has taken its toll on this big fella, he was all worn out and decided to sneak away, find a quiet place for a bit of a nap. Even the sea cucumbers are getting excited at the moment. I've seen a couple of them standing rather, rather loud and proud and erect on the reef edge as they're going about their business. I've never seen so many big nudie branks out and I've just realized why. These are the eggs of the nudibranch that must be mating season. Nudibranchs are simultaneous hermaphrodites and what that means is they've got both a male component and a female component at the same time. Pretty cool, huh? And when it comes to mating time, they find a fellow nudibranch, park up alongside and plug into each other and then go their separate ways and lay their orange ribbony eggs. Even the turtles have a certain look in their eye at this time of the year. If you've ever had the misfortune of going to the wool shed in Cairns after midnight, you know the look. It's mating season. I've been waiting for so long, girl, yeah, to be with you alone, girl, yeah, yeah. Quite remarkably, after being born on these beaches, a baby green turtle will then set off and travel the world, riding the ocean's currents, until up to 30 years later, when she's ready to lay her own eggs, she will swim thousands of kilometers, returning to the exact beach where she was born. This year, there's quite the turnout. It seems there's thousands that have made the long journey here for some fun in the sun. But when it comes time to actually laying, Things are a little different to how they were 30 years ago. The beach where these turtles would have been born is now covered in plastic and rubbish. You can see a turtle's come up here and tried to lay, unsuccessfully given up and returned to the ocean. Up here a little bit further, it looks like another one's had a crack. You can see where she's come up here, tried to dig once, tried to dig a second time, but this is what she's having to having to try and walk through and then dig through. And you can only imagine when the babies are born, if she manages to lay, it's just an obstacle course of rubbish for the poor little turtles. Like what chance do they have? And this is a similar problem, the whole stretch of the beach. And you can see how entire hatcheries, entire breeding stocks of green turtles can be really put in danger just from the rubbish and pollution here. They're following the call of nature. They need to get back to this exact beach. But when the beach looks like this, they just don't stand a chance. I'm sure it's not how she remembers it 30 years ago as a little baby hatchling on these beaches. Completely exhausted and with nowhere to lay, some mother turtles are forced to discard their eggs underwater, giving them no chance at survival. So this is a school of silver biddies, a rather unassuming fish that I haven't really paid too much attention. But it's actually these guys that trigger the most ferocious feeding frenzy I have ever seen. Holy mo- There is a school of like a hundred big GTs here. And there's maybe 200 sharks. They're all just cruising along. I don't know whether they're feeding or what's going on, but this is, this is unbelievable. But there's this chaos. This guy feeds himself. 
Are you kidding? This is absolutely crazy. This shark a beach himself. Oh my god. Oh, watch out. <laughs> that was so crazy. This has been going on for over a week now. So I've been set up here and not wanting to miss a single moment of it. We've never seen anything like this and I'm sure whether the giant trevallies are spawning and that's what the sharks are trying to get on or whether there's a smaller fish silver bitty that's here spawning and uh, and then of course all the GTs and sharks are, are into them. Really keen to see what's causing all the commotion. Here they come here, this is the ripples. That's probably a bad idea at the moment. The water is so much murkier than you think. It's all stirred up. I'm on them. I'm right above them. The water's like starting to boil as they're getting excited. Oh, oh yes. Oh my god. Oh, it's just erupted. This is crazy. Someone get David Attenborough on the sat phone. This is that geo stuff. Unbloody believable. This might be some of the coolest footage I've ever captured. This is this is unreal. So there are hundreds, if not thousands, of giant trevally, big GTs, staunching just off the just off the beach here. And then there's just as many sharks that are in a little bit shallower. It seems the giant trevally are hitting the bait fish and pushing them up ashore. And then the sharks are getting right in shallower and actually beaching themselves. As the days rolled on, I noticed a clear pattern and game plan of what was going on. The massive school of GTs and sharks cruise just offshore with the GTs a bit deeper until they locate a school of fish. And then the GTs erupt in a feeding frenzy. As the smaller fish try escape in the shallows, the sharks surge in, sometimes surfing waves and close off the escape. With their tougher skin, the sharks are able to completely beach themselves on the sand before kicking and almost crawling back into the water. I'd just walk up and down the beach, sort of in disbelief of what I was witnessing, feeling like the Pied Piper with this huge school of epic fish just off the shoreline. These fish are huge, like most fishermen's dream fish. I can only imagine what would have happened if I threw a lure in. But to be honest, such a special, natural moment. I was happy just trying to capture it on film and leave it all play out naturally. Dinner with a show right on the front door. I noticed door. courtship and sporting behavior amongst the GTs and I just didn't want to interrupt anything. By the end of the week, more and more of the GTs were black. This is the color phase of the males while staunching and trying to impress the females. You'd see a big silver female GT take off and a few black males in hot pursuit trying to convince her that his offspring is what she needed. When ready, she'd dart to the surface, releasing her eggs, while the males would then race to fertilize them. It must be hungry work, because as the spawning activity increased, so did their appetite. So it became evident that the GT spawning was perfectly in sync with the spawning and the aggregation of the silver biddies. That provided a food source for the entire event. And the sharks, well, the sharks here never miss out on an easy meal. And the next time I swim past one of those small, rather unassuming silver biddies, I'm gonna treat him with a whole new level of respect, knowing that he has survived one of the most ferocious feeding frenzies from the ocean's top predators. And you never know, he might even be the offspring of this guy. And it's so full. So these guys are spawning here at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's full of eggs. These guys are spawning. But probably not. I didn't like his chances. Oh, <laughs> oh no. That was very close to our little mate. <laughs>